every 20 pounds a guy loses, he gains one inch of penis. Pounds, that's 14 and a half inches of penis growth. So when I hit my goal, I will have a 15 inch penis. And for those of you in here who are mathematicians, that's 14 and a half plus a half equals 15. Let it say. We all know the upsides though, guys. I've been losing a lot of weight. We all know the upsides, the health, health benefits, right? A lot of upsides to losing weight. Nobody ever really focuses on the negatives. I no, I no longer have creative places to hide my drugs when I fly. I'm serious. I was the type of dude that could take like yellow cake uranium to my gooch and get through airport security no problem. And even if it was found, they're just gonna be like, I don't want to fuck with you. Like you actually see TSA agents smiling. So far, I get asked a lot. So far, John, you lost a lot of weight. What has the best spot been? And I look at people, and when I look at people, I tell them to shut the fuck up. That's what I tell people. Shut the fuck up. But I look at them and tell them the best part of me losing weight is that August 3rd, 2013. I woke up in the morning, looked down, and I saw my first morning was since I was 14 years old. We got to reconnect. I looked down at my penis, I was like, hey penis. See, because I'm from West Virginia, I call my penis penis. A lot of rednecks call their dog dog. It doesn't need a special name. I looked down at my penis, my penis looked at me. My penis was like, John, you got old. I was like, penis, you need a haircut. I felt bad though, I had to make an apology to my penis. I was like, penis, for our entire 20s, I have left you rarely used, neglected, and the only time you did it, you usually involved a stripper and titty glitter, and it wasn't what made you happy. It wasn't. So, I promised to make it up to my penis. Later this day, I do as every day, I go to the gym. This is the day I start taking the girl that I'm starting to talk to. I take a beautiful young lady to the gym with me as my workout partner. She's been really supportive, real beautiful girl, we go, we start working out. She's doing her thing, I'm doing mine, I go to check on her. She's in the back room of this gym. Anybody remember like gym class where you would do the crab walk across the floor like on all fours? You guys remember that? That's what she was doing. And as she's doing it, it was, are you really happy about that? Never back memories? I was like crab walking. Yeah. She's doing this crab walk across the floor. And as she's doing it, a little sweat's building on her brow. She's breathing a little heavy. I'm like, shit, this is a ride. This was the worst opportunity for my penis to make its second appearance on the day, right? <laughs> like, it just happened, too. She's like, Ugh. My penis was like, what was that? It was good at the stories. I look down, I'm like, penis, no! He's like, put me in! He's <laughs> like, you said we were going to make up the lost time. Oh, I'm like, penis, you don't understand, there's cameras everywhere. He's like, fuck, I wanna watch. Put me in holes. I'm like, when'd you start speaking Mexican slang? He's like, I went Cosmo, bitches like this. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> oh man, but I was spending an awful lot of time with this girl. We go to the gym every day, six days a week. Me and this girl go to the gym together. We hang out in the evenings. A lot of talk starts happening when you hang out with somebody, you know, that much. People assume you're dating, people assume you're fucking. People would always ask me, like, John, you know, you, you, with the girl, you guys fucking? Let me explain. There was a lot of fucking that happened, but none of it necessarily took place in this region here. It was all kind of isolated, like, right around here. That's the only place I really got fucked, was, like, right here. Never here. Some of it was here. The only fluids to leave my body through it all were, like, right here. <laughs> People are like, how'd you lose so much weight? I'm like, tears must weigh a lot. I don't know. <laughs> she was the master of mind fucking. She was crazy. 
that joke actually cost me the friendship with her, so I'm kind of happy you guys laughed because it was expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good to say it the thanks to me. She's like, I saw your joke, I didn't like it. I'm like, well, listen, you've known how I felt about you for four months now. Have you touched my dick? <laughs> no? no? Then the shoe fits then, doesn't it, bitch? <laughs> Okay, that they can get away with strictly by being female. And I've heard it my whole life. Oh, well, she's crazy. Well, she's a female. <laughs> and you just laugh that shit off. But if a guy gets called crazy, he's either in prison or on a database watch list somewhere. Yeah. And it's all fucking right. Like, you just can't do this. Oh, man. Relationships are tough. I've had friends recently try to fix me up. Because they're like, John, you start to lose weight, look good, get confident. Let's get you back out there. You know, trying to mix me up with that stupid shit. We have the perfect person for you, John. The perfect person. And let's hope Pussy's made a cheesecake and she hates <laughs> chocolate milk. She's by far not perfect to me, okay? You have no idea what my perfect girl is. <laughs> uh, guys, it's great to be here. I've been looking forward to this show for a while, man. A lot of bad shit's been happening. A lot of bad shit. I just want to send a prayer out. My sister-in-law is, uh, has been in a coma since December 10th in Philadelphia. So this show is a great release for me, and thank you guys for coming out. But like I said, I traveled a long way to be here. And traveling is fun, okay? But I don't like to fly. Anybody else like a nervous flyer? Oh, yeah, I don't like to fly. I get real nervous. Last time I flew, flew with a couple buddies, right? And uh, my buddy had these flexorol. Anybody know what flexorol? Okay, flexorol, for those of you that don't know, is a muscle relaxer. It's not a nerve pill. You're going to appear calm because you can't fucking move. That's, that's why. My buddy hands me 10 flexorol, okay? He gives me 10 of them. Now, I wasn't stupid. I wasn't sh Guys, seriously, I'm going to ask nice this time. Shut the fuck up. I love you guys. We're going to drink, but you're disrupting my show. You're disrupting the whole show. Shut up. Um, where the fuck was I? Because I was going to distract my shirt off. Flexor roll. Flexor roll. Flexor roll. My buddy hits me these flexor rolls. Ten of them. I take two. I take the other eight, put them in my wallet. Then I look down at airport security and I see how thoroughly they're checking everybody. I'm like, oh shit, this is where I go to jail. This is where I get busted. So rather than take the eight pills out of my wallet, hand it back to my buddy, and say, hey, Mike, these are your pills with the bottle with your name on them. Put them in there so we get through airport security. Give them back to me. That would have been a smart option, right? No, my option was I need to eat all eight of these right now. <laughs> so with no water, I go down eight more flex for waiting another half hour to get through airport security. Then they do this fucked up thing where they make you take your shoes off. You guys ever seen a fucking 600 pound man try to put Timberland boots back on? <laughs> She's like, we've been waiting on you. I'm like, man, I've got good friends. They're great. They told her. <laughs> I get on the plane. Now, mind you, everybody has already been seated, and they're waiting to leave. They're waiting on one guy, and it's me. The fat fuck walking on with boots on his hands, right? <laughs> so what this does is, and you guys know how narrow the alleyways on airplanes are, the only flight in my life I've been placed in the final row of the aircraft, row 32, Begins this game of like, pardon me, excuse me, where I'm like fucking somebody in the earlobe and putting my ass on somebody else's shoulder the whole way down the plane. Just like, pardon me, excuse me, 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 pardon me, excuse me. I get through first class, I look down coach, and it's just a row of disgust on the whole side of his aircraft, like looking like. So now I'm like, man, what do I do? So I just get the right idea, I'll spin around. Pardon me, excuse me. Pardon me, excuse me. As if we're gonna get up in the mid-flight and people are gonna be like, at least I didn't get the balls in my face. I had the ass. That was, that was kinda nice. Man, I, I flew a couple years ago with a good 
friend of mine. He's six foot four, 360 pounds. So he's a big dude too. We get on the plane. We actually booked our flight together. We booked our seats together. We get on the plane and the flight attendant's like, whoa, 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 hold up. <laughs> we get separated. I get put in the very front row of coach on the left side of the aircraft. Coincidentally, my buddy gets put in the final row, right side of the aircraft. I don't know if they thought it was a counterbalance to ship. <laughs> As if we would have taken off and the pilot would have came on two hours into flight and been like, you may be wondering why we're still hovering over the Pittsburgh International Airport. <laughs> We'd like to thank row 9, seats A, B, and C. We really need to stop and refuel somewhere in Cincinnati, St. Louis, Salt Lake City. Should be in LA by Thursday. You should have taken the bus. <laughs> thank you for flying American Airlines. Oh, man. Like I said, tra traveling's a good time. I'm at a hotel tonight, guys. I love hotels. Hotels are fun. I stayed at a hotel recently. And uh, I woke up at like 6 in the morning after a night of drinking, so like a lot of people, I, I had to shit. I'm not afraid to tell you that. <laughs> Everybody poops. I read the book as a child. Everybody poops. I know. And uh, I took this shit, right? And I called the front desk because I required the use of a plunger. <laughs> That's not even a joke. Y'all are just like, I get it. for this plunger. And I'm like, yeah, room 311, need a plunger. She's like, well, I'm the only one on duty. You're going to have to come get it. Cool. Nobody checks into a hotel at 6 in the morning, right? People check out of a hotel at 6 in the morning. Business people, people with real jobs, they don't stand up and spew filth for 20 minutes and get paid for it. But these flight attendants and stewardesses were waiting in line to check out. I'm in the back of this line. The lady at the front desk noticed me. She's like, honey, can I help you? And I was like, I just called about the plunger. Figure in. I called. She would have it waiting on me to lessen the embarrassment of this experience. No. She had to go get it. She was absent from the desk for three minutes, leaving me, airline pilots, and stewardesses to realize I just took a big shit that they were putting in their hand. <laughs> so she finally comes back out with this plastic wrap plunger, hands it to me. She's like, what room are you again? And I said, 311. Oh, Mr. Rollich. We see you're here for two more nights. Yeah. You can go ahead and hold on to that. <laughs> As if to say, you shit big once. We have a feeling you're gonna shit big again. Thank you for staying at the quality end. <laughs> and that's their new campaign coming out this year, their advertising slogan. <laughs> you shit big once, quality in. We can handle that. <laughs> Oh no, it's fun stuff, guys. How many here with family members tonight? You got any family coming out with you guys? That's good. Family is an amazing thing. I'm lucky at 31 years old that I still get to spend a lot of time with my family. And on Sundays, I go to my mother's house. We do a Sunday dinner, and my sister comes with her kids. After dinner, we do game night. And uh, some of the games we play are categories. Anybody here played the board game categories? That's a very fun game. If you guys don't know what it is. There's a die with every letter of the alphabet on it. Okay, you roll the die, whatever letter you get, you have to answer these topics. It's all the time, a very basic game. One of the topics on the card was recreational activities. I rolled the die, the letter S came up. Okay, what's an obvious answer? Recreational activity, letter S. Right, too easy, sex. I delve a little deeper into the subject, all right? I said sodomy. Oh, <laughs> Now, mind you, I'm playing this game with 11 and 12 year old children <laughs> that don't have the use of this vocabulary yet, but that's not my problem, that's a public school system problem. All right? Give these kids a dictionary or something, learn them up proper. I want the point. Anyway, timer goes off, we start giving our answers, we get to the one that is recreational activity. Go around the table, people give their answers. My sister was the first one to go. My sister said sex, okay? She took the obvious road. Got the point. Next one to go, me. I said sodomy. As soon as I said it, my mother said scratch it. Meaning she had the same answer too. Do you know how uncomfortable that is? Because when I wrote the answer, I actually giggled out loud. Like I was like sodomy. And right at that point, my mother was like, Okay. I have thought of the few times in my life where I've had anal sex. 
Was my mother thinking the same thing when she wrote the answer to? Like, this woman has scarred me tremendously through the years. This is why I do this! This is why I'm on stage, because this woman, I love her, I love her to death. Last summer, at her house, right? Sister and the kids down, they're swimming in the pool, kids come in. You guys remember the popsicle, the bomb pops, red, white, and blue missile popsicles? You guys remember those? Awesome, right? My mom offers the kids bomb pops. They each take one, they go outside. My mother looks at my sister and I, she goes to offer us a bomb pop, but she has one of those slips of the tongue. We've all meant to say something, but accidentally said something else at some point. Instead of saying, would you kids like a bomb pop, she said, would you kids like a blowjob? <laughs> now, I'm extremely stuck at this point in time because I wanted a popsicle, so a yes to this question, I don't know what the fuck is going to happen. Because as a man, let's be honest, this is the one question every one of us wants to hear from the one woman we never want to hear it from, right? This was extremely nuts. And my mom couldn't grasp why my sister and I were so, like, just dumbfounded. She said, like, what? 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 We're like, Mom, you just said blowjob. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. We convinced her that she finally did this, so then she decides to fuck with us even more. She starts blowing the pot like the fucking bra pot. And I'm extremely like, wow, that's good. Like, wow. I'm going to put you in the movies. Me and you, Mom, producer, actress. Save money. I'm from West Virginia, like I said, that shit's a rise, man. <laughs> but guys, I did, uh, I turned 31 this year. About to turn 32 here real soon. And uh, my cousin and I, I call him Cousin Douchebag, and I call him that for a reason. I love him, but he's a douchebag, he is. And uh, every year we celebrate our birthday together because he also was born on February 1st. He was born 81, I was born 82. Every year since childhood, we do it together. Last year, like no other, we went out, went to a couple bars, my cousin came across, you know, a couple ladies, so he starts talking, brings me in, he's my cousin, he's a comedian, I'm making him laugh, everything's good. He's like, why don't you come back to my apartment? Me, him, two girls on our way back to my cousin's apartment. Birthday, shaping up nicely, right? Yeah. So you think. The girl sitting next to me up front on the way back, she makes the comment, she's like, I'm so drunk, I'd fuck anything. Now, anything rhymes an awful lot like John. <laughs> I, I think... A -E -I. I don't know how you do it, I do it that way. Anyway, we finally get back to the apartment, right? We're talking, we're in the living room, a couple more drinks. My cousin makes his breakaway. He's like, I'm about to go to bed. So I think him, girl number one, bedroom, leaving me, girl number two, living room, it's all gonna fall into place. No, both girls get up, follow my cousin into the bedroom, right? That's how I felt. <laughs> Literally, that was all. <laughs> To top it off, the apartment, really thin walls. So everything that's happening in this bedroom, I now have to fucking hear, all right? So now I'm getting to the point, I'm mad, I'm too drunk to drive home, and my cousin's obviously doing a good enough job that it sounds pretty fun in there. I just start pounding one out on his futon. <laughs> You know what? Fuck that. Every sound that I hear coming out of this room, I want to make go back into this room. Alright? So when I hear one of these little bar skanks yell, oh, fuck my tight pussy, I'm like, yeah, fuck my tight pussy. Yeah. <laughs> I disrupt their rhythm so bad that my cousin decides to pick up his phone and call me in the other room. He doesn't yell, he doesn't come out, he calls me. I see my phone going off, I pick it up. I'm the one that answers the phone, like, I have a reason to be pissed off and all this mess. But yeah, what's up, dude? No, man. You disrupted my rhythm. Fuck you. No, I'm not mad at you. Go do your thing. You do your thing, I'm gonna do my thing, alright? Just so you know, when I'm done, I'm gonna touch one thing in this apartment. Good night. Just so you guys know, when I was done, I touched the spoons. That was just to make breakfast a little bit more awkward. Speaking of awkward, that's been my set, and my name's been John Rollins, and thank you guys for coming out. Merry Christmas! That is my buddy, John Rollins. I've known that guy.
think it was in 2009. 2009 when we first met? God bless. All right, hold on. You, you can hear John every Friday on the AM Army. He usually joins me right around 6 o'clock, and he decides to wake up on time. And <laughs> it's usually either me call Wake Up John or... You provide a service for me. You wake yeah, me up. Yeah, I provide a service. And anyone else wants to provide a service, you can find him on the street corner later. Now, I got one more comment for you. You guys ready? This guy was Pittsburgh's 2013 last comic yeah. standing. Put your hands together. Welcome to the stage, Mr. Tim Ross.